Hello, thanks for coming to this video. I have an idea. I'm going to flesh out this idea for you right now, and then we can probably jump in and start making it happen. Let's see if it works. So the idea, I've had this idea bumping around in my head for quite a while. What if we could have a DAW digital audio workstation or something to help you create music digitally on the computer, but it's all based on plain text. Plain text is huge right now. I'm actually using this in Obsidian, which is plain text based, but let's stick to the topic here. What's the main idea? Use plain text as your music creation format. What are the implications of this? Why would we want to do this? Well, I can think of three main reasons. Oops, I forgot a bullet. The first one, you can use Git, which already has a massive ecosystem for collaboration, and you can develop your music in the same way that you develop coding projects. I think that's an awesome idea. As a result of that, artists can open source their song whenever they see fit or use it to collaborate internally to with, with other people, however you want to do it. But imagine some popular artist a year or two after they've released their song for the first time, they open source it. And suddenly the source code basically for their song, the exact stuff that they use to create their song is available to the public and anyone can access it with this free software that we're going to create now. Also, as a result, people can just fork the code repository, which will just be a Git repo, to cover it and remix the song in a new way, using all the resources available to the original artist, but adding their own flair in a way that perhaps was never possible before. So, very exciting stuff. How do we get started? What does this look like at the very, very, very first cut? Well, for an MVP minimum viable product, I think we should try to render any wave, in other words, any sound file from a plain text configuration and a MIDI instrument. So we're not using any actual recordings, we're just using MIDI instruments and some kind of plain text configuration. And I'm thinking about trying to do this project all on video or maybe just doing the coding on video, do the planning offline and come up with a board like this and then talk through it and then do the coding. Not sure yet. Not sure if I have the, uh, you know, the oomph to push through doing that much recording, but we'll see. So a second MVP, once we get the first one accomplished, could be to include another wave file to superimpose upon the output wave file at a certain point in time, at a certain measure perhaps, and that's where, if you can take another audio file that's just raw audio and superimpose it, that's where you can get recording. So you can record actual good old analog audio and throw it in there. Or you can have the nice cut and dry MIDI instruments where you specify each note. So, I don't know why I wrote this, but units, BPM, start measure, something like that would have to be specified, right? So then we get into... What would the very first music file look like? I didn't finish filling this out, unfortunately, but we have a song entry. This is YAML, yet another markup language. So it's just plain text markup. You have a song entry, type is song. So each specifies what type of object we're dealing with here, right? So we have a type song, output song.wave. So when we render, we're getting an actual song from this and it has a list. I, I thought song would be a reserved word, but hey, what's stopping you from having more than one song and creating more than one wave in one go? So I might actually delete that. But the song has a list of patterns, okay? So a pattern has the name. It's going to look up this name using this key right here. It has a start measure where does this pattern start and how many times does it repeat FL Studio style? So then you can look up the pattern, right? So we got type pattern and uh, I think we need like notes and it could be a list like A, B, C, D. I don't know. I didn't think that far ahead. Got to come up with something there. And then of course it's going to have the instrument, which would be piano in this case. And then we do another cross reference where it says, oh, piano, let me go find that. Oh, here it is. It's an instrument, and here's a path to the sound font file. Or maybe there's an easier way to render MIDI. I really am not an expert on it, so I have to do a little research there. But basically, this is where we link in the MIDI instrument. So with these three pieces, I think we could have something potentially mildly useful. Great. Still an idea. We, we haven't put any uh, rubber to the road yet. How do we do that? So here are my first steps that I think would be a, a good start. Create a Git repo with a README. I always like to just throw everything in Git to begin with. So just blank README file, Git repo, push it, and you're good to go. Add a CLI command uh, 
to basically create a Python package that has a CLI access when you log or when you install it, right? So you pip install this package and then you get a command such as like plain text to DAW. And then when you type plain text DAW into your terminal and hit enter, it prints hello world. So if we can get to that point, we have a good starting spot for the rest of the stuff below. Then what we want to do is parse a sample YAML to a dict. This will involve maybe grabbing a path to a file from the CLI. And then all we have to do is just take this file wherever it is and read it into YAML, which is so easy. It's just yaml.load, right? So <laughs> that's the next step. Once we can do that, then we can do some cross-referencing to take this song object and build it up so that we have all the information in one place. I'm not sure how that's going to look. Maybe we have a dictionary. I mean, it, this will return a dictionary when we load it, right? So maybe uh, maybe the cross-referencing should happen at render time. I'm not sure. I guess uh, so. Th I guess that means that these two could potentially happen together. But once we have that object in memory, that's where it gets fuzzy for me because I don't know how MIDI instruments work. I don't know how hard it is to render notes from a MIDI instrument. Is it like a copy and paste thing? Is there even support for this in Python? Do we need like C extensions to get into there? So we can lay the groundwork, we can parse the config, and then uh, I think it's gonna be time to do a little more research to figure out how some of this stuff works. So that's my idea. I hope you like it, and I hope this was interesting for you. Um, I don't know if we'll do any coding in this video. I guess stay tuned um, and we'll see. Okay, so what's a video without a little live coding? I have a fresh blank folder here in my repos folder. So let's follow through with our first steps. I'm gonna touch readme.md and I'll just throw a little something in there. Plain text DAW, plain text DAW. Seems good enough, very informative. And I will go ahead and get in it. I will get at all, get commit, initial commit. Now we need to push. So let me go create a repository on the page key GitLab or GitHub and I'll be right back. Okay, I have it right here, plain text DAW on the page key GitLab. So I can get remote add origin, get it github.com, page key text slash plain text DAW. And now I can get push origin master. And there we go. We have our first commit. So we'll check that guy off green. So we're going to add a CLI command to print hello world when we say plain text DAW. So to do that, we're going to need to set up some files for a Python package. So let's start with setup.py, requirements.txt. This is at least the way I like to do it. Um, and we'll also create a source folder, plain text DAW. And we'll create init.py. We'll create cli.py, which is where I like to put my entry point for that sort of thing. And we can start setting up setup.py. I always forget how to do this, so let me look it up. Okay, so I think we have everything we need here. We have a uh, name of the project, a version, description, my name, my email, uh, packages, console scripts. So the big one is the console scripts, right? So we say the plain text doc command equals plain text doc package dot CLI colon CLI entry point. So that just means we need to go into CLI.py and say CLI entry point print hello world. And we'll see what happens if we pip install dash e dot. And then we call plain text DAW. Ah, we got it. Okay, so, and we have some stuff to add to git ignore. As you can see, we've got a bunch of stuff we don't want to commit that just came up. So let's go ahead and add everything.egg info. And we can also add pycache. And that should cover all the stuff that just cropped up. Okay, so that's a good commit right there. So we can say, yeah, so we'll, we'll commit and we will say, add simple CLI interface. Push it, call this green, parse YAML to dict. So 
uh, we need some test data so that we can try it out. So I'm going to say test data because we might put actual tests in that file too. And I'll go ahead and copy our MVP music file here, which is probably going to change quite a bit. But we'll start with that. And we can say song.yaml. And we'll just paste that in there. And all we're trying to do here is to load that in a nice format. So, and I won't do arg parse or any of that fancy stuff. I'm just going to directly import sys. And we'll say print usage is going to be a function that we have that just says print usage. And then we print plain text uh, file render file to wave. And we can say project file uh, for now. So uh, now what we can do is if we don't like what the user does, it's going to be very simple. If sys.argv, if the length of the arguments passed to the program is less than two, because the first one, recall, is the name of the program, so we want exactly one argument. Actually, let's just say if it's two, which is what we're expecting, then we can say uh, file path equals sys.argv of one, and we'll hold off on that for now. Otherwise, um, we're going to print usage because they did something unexpected. So we can take that file path and we can say with open file path um, for reading as f, uh, we can say raw yaml equals f.read, and then we can say config equals yaml.load raw yaml loader equals yaml.safe loader. And of course we have to import yaml and we have to remember to put it into our requirements that we need py yaml. And another thing is we can uh, put in install requires. Uh, let's just throw it right in here. It's bad practice probably, but install requires equals Hi, YAML. Okay. I'm going to delete requirements.txt for now. Who cares? Let's not worry about it. Let's just make sure I didn't break installation. So if I pip install e dot, it seems to work. And it looks like it checked for pi YAML. So that's good. Okay, so back to this. We load our config. And let's just print the config and see what it looks like. So now I can do plain text DAW down here and test it out. And it prints the usage because I gave too few, too many arguments. I'm going to pass the right number of arguments to test data song.yaml. OK. I think I uh, need to capitalize the L. OK. Next. It worked. OK, perfect. Now what if I pass a file that doesn't exist? It should check for that, right? So let's say if not os.path.exists file path sys.exit1 error percent s not found file path and we'll print that to standard error because it is an error and we have to import os as well look at that okay so we're getting somewhere now let's see if that worked good Okay, perfect. So we can check off another box on our roadmap here. Parse YAML to dictionary. Check. Okay, cross-referencing the pattern and researching sound fonts, I think I'm going to leave for the next video. So let's commit everything and call it a day. So uh, uh, what's, what's this looking like? Looks good, right? Yep. Okay, so let's commit. We'll say uh, add YAML parser. And we're done. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.